Hello and welcome to Hawker Help Desk. I'm Kelly Royer with American Business Development Group representing Enersys, the manufacturer of Hawker batteries. In this episode, I want to talk to you about how you charge a Hawker battery using a charger that doesn't have the auto off feature. Now, most modern chargers do, but there are still those out there that do not. Plus, you want to make sure that the charger is safe for use with AGM or absorb glass mat style of batteries. We highly recommend that you use a charger that has a constant voltage and a voltage output that doesn't exceed 15 volts when charging a single battery or more than 30 volts when charging batteries in series or series parallel. But before we begin to charge, we need to inspect the battery. After all, there's no sense trying to charge the battery if it can't even pass inspection. In fact, that can be quite dangerous. If you're not certain how to do that, check out our Hawker Help Desk video on battery inspection. Now on to charging. First, you want to make sure that all your selectors are in the off position, then plug in your charger. Next, take your clamps. Take your red clamp and attach that to the battery's positive terminal. Take the negative clamp and attach that to your battery's negative terminal. We're going to want to start off with the lowest amp possible. Switch that to 2 amps at 12 volts. Now, just understand, it's pumping out more than 12 volts. We just have to make sure that it's below 15. Now, over here we actually turn the system on. There's two ways to do that. One is through a timer that runs from one all the way to 120 minutes. But how do you know when the battery's done charging? There's also a hold feature. Now that's gonna provide a constant current continuously, but then how do we know that it's fully charged the battery or when to turn it off? The key is in the amp meter. When the amp meter sets at one amp or less for three hours or more, now you know that the battery's accepted all the charge that it can take. Okay. So let's go ahead and turn it on using the timed feature. Doing that, we want to monitor the amount of volts that the charger is applying. We want it to stay at 15 or below. Now, if our charger doesn't actually have the voltmeter on it, we can simply use a multimeter to test the voltage. If the voltage is 15 volts or below, we can simply write AGM off to the side, and now we know that this is safe for use for AGM batteries but different settings are different settings. So now we're gonna have to check the 40 amp output. When we switch that over, we note that our voltage climbs above 15 volts, so now we know we can't use that setting. So back that off. The one that reads 40 amps, we simply write AGM, then put an X through it. The one that's acceptable for use for AGM, we can write AGM off to the side, and now we know we can use that. Then we monitor the amp meter. When the amp meter sits at one amp or less for three hours or more, now we know that the battery has accepted all the charge it can take. When that's the case, we simply turn the charger off. And of course, the next step would be to test the battery. But we're going to have to wait at least two hours before doing so, otherwise we risk measuring what's called a surface charge. And that surface charge is going to be elevated and inaccurate. Okay, now also don't be surprised if when you hook up a deeply discharged battery to the charger that the amp meter doesn't sit pretty low. That's because of plate sulfation within the battery. Plate sulfation adds resistance to the battery, but keep it on the charger. As it's on the charger, it's gonna reduce that sulfation, your amps are gonna go back up. But then again, when it drops back down to one amp or less, now that you know the battery's taken all it can take, simply turn the charger off. And now a few notes about safety. Always follow your local safety directives. Read and understand the owner's manual. Wear the appropriate personal protective equipment or PPE and never lean over a battery that is receiving a charge as there's a remote possibility that it could possibly explode. Also be aware of the rotten egg smell as that indicates the likelihood of hydrogen sulfide gas, which can be explosive if there's a spark. And lastly, it's advisable to discontinue charging any battery that is too hot to touch or shows other signs of overheating such as bubbling or a bulging battery case. Well, now you know how to charge a Hawker battery with a charger that does not have the auto off feature. If you have any questions or any other battery-related issue, please visit us at hawkerbattery.com. While there, check out our one-page quarterly newsletter called Hawker Headlines, as well as our complete Hawker Help Desk training series in the Video Vault. Of course, you can always reach us on the Hawker Hotline at 877-485-1472.